Okay, let's hop in here. So, first of all, this technique was taken from me. This painterly shader was inspired by a video I watched by Cody Gindy. Um, he goes over kind of a manual way to do this process, but I'm kind of going to go over an automated way to do this process where you don't even have to pick up a paintbrush. We're going to be using a third-party software called PhotoSketcher which will paint our normal maps. So let's dive in. So here's my SUSE now. I'm just gonna add a subdivision modifier here. And with that subdivision modifier, we're just gonna add it to a value of three, and then we're going to add a displacement map. The purpose of this displacement map is to generate some extra detail for PhotoSketcher to kind of sketch a brushstroke where that detail is. So now we're gonna lower the strength of our displacement map to something very, very small. So as you can see here, we've got some bumps in that displacement map. So we're gonna go through here and we're gonna add, we're just gonna adjust the size of that displacement map even further so we can get a little bit more detail. I find point one to work the best, but play around with it and see what you feel is necessary. Okay, we're just gonna add another subdivision modifier on top of this. And on top of this, we're doing this just because like there are some lines from the initial mesh you can see that are bladed over. So we're just gonna add a little bit more detail so that it kind of smooths those uh, points out. Now we have a high mesh surface to apply our, our baked normal map on top of. So here we go. Let's go into bake. We're just gonna change the bake type to a normal. And one thing here is to make sure you set your space to object. So I find that works the best for me. Once we have that, we're just gonna generate an image texture. And a quick note here is if you have a far away object or like a background object, this method works well using a lower res uh, image here. But like if you wanna up-res that to like a 4k image that would work best for a like close-up object or a character that you're trying to generate that kind of look that you want and really the sky's the limit here it's just a matter of time and performance that you're gonna have to spend basically baking the texture and then when you get into photo sketcher it's going to take a long time to paint over that so here we go so we kind of saved our normal map this is what it looks like with all the extra detail added in. As you can see, there's a lot of areas of contrast and a lot of, it adds a little bit more to the final. It helps photo sculpture a lot when it actually gets to paint over the image. There we go. We're just gonna save it into a standard folder. I'm gonna call it noise one. Okay, let's open up our image in photo sculpture. So here's the main screen of photo sculpture. This is a great program, it's also free. I highly recommend it. I also recommend supporting the creator of this program since it's kind of a donation based program. So let's go to our desired sketch style. You can see there's a number of different styles here. I'm going to choose expressive brush strokes, but feel free to play around with it. You could probably get some really cool results with all these different styles. I just find this is the style that works for me personally. So as you can see here, it's painting over the details in the normal map. As you can see, here's our final result. We're just gonna save that in the same place. We're just gonna save it as a PNG with photo sketch on the end. You can use whatever naming convention you want. So now let's pop back into Blender. We're just gonna apply our new normal map into the um, shader. So here we go. We're gonna open up photo sketcher, just gonna change it to non-color. This is very important. And then we're gonna plug it into a normal map itself. So let's plug it into a normal map. Let's change it, make sure it's into the color value. And then we're just gonna change this to an object space. And then we're just gonna plug it in. Okay, so obviously there's no result now, but we just need to remove our modifiers from the equation. Before this step, I added a couple light sources so you guys could see what the final result would be. And okay, here's the final result. Feel free to play around. It's a great technique. Thank you guys. Subscribe for more.